Amen. Yes, we uh, we can even rejoice in the trials because there's there's a lot of good things that happen in trials. One is the testing of our faith produces patience, and let patience have its perfect work that we may be perfect and mature, lacking nothing. There's also another. There's also another dynamic to, to trials, and that is uh, you know that uh, you're doing something when you're in a trial. You know that you're making advancements, and we can rejoice in that. We were, just a quick testimony, we were at a park uh, last week on a weekend, uh, on a Saturday, and uh, we were worshiping. And the police officer came up to us and said we had to shut it down. Uh, technically, we were breaking some rules, so it wasn't it wasn't like uh, uh, wrong for him to do that. And so we 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 were totally compliant. We thanked him, and uh, we shut it down. And I told uh, the 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 person leading the the uh, the set, who set uh, everything up. I said. I said, man, we're, we're doing something here. This is good news. I mean, we're, we're making an impact. They, they come to shut us down. This is, we can rejoice in this. And, and then, and then we, so they, so they said we couldn't amplify, but they didn't know how loud my, my, my daughter's voice was. <laughs> so, so we moved, we, we moved uh, closer to the sidewalk where people were walking and my daughter started uh, singing and uh, God just just came strong and one young man came Amen. came up to Amen. us one young man came up to us and and said what what song is she singing like I want to get that on my phone I feel such joy and peace and and I and I said I said well I said she's actually making the song up they don't have that one <laughs> she <laughs> And I had the opportunity to share the gospel with him and and pray for him and it was just beautiful yeah, and and right and, and that wouldn't have happened uh, in that way unless unless uh, the 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 police officer had shut us down. So when we rejoice when we rejoice yes, in the trial or we rejoice in the difficulty and we see it from the light of uh, we're actually making advancements. Uh, then our heart is is ready. If we would have got offended, we would have just left. But we didn't. We're like, okay, well, we have permission to do it without amplification. Let's do that for a little while. And God moved and touched his soul. So <laughs> that's right. He did. He did. So uh, one one of our one of our our family gifts is loud. <laughs> We're all loud. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So so today today we're gonna talk, we're gonna continue to talk about Abba Father. Uh and we're going to uh pull from John seventeen, a very familiar verse. Yeah. And what I said yesterday was we see the relationship we have with the Father by observing the relationship Jesus has with the Father. So the relationship that Jesus has is now ours. And so in John 17, 20, uh, we have heard this many times before. <clears throat> but what I want to suggest that we do is let's jump in the story. Let's get in the story. Let's let's stand next to Jesus as he's speaking these words. In John chapter 17, verse 20 through 26. And verse 20 starts out this way. Jesus is praying. And he's praying to the Father. And we are standing next to him. And we're looking at Jesus and we're listening to Jesus and he says father I do not ask for these only 
but also for those who will believe in me through their words and say this would say say this is me this is me lord that they may all be one just as you father are in me and i in you that they also may be in us let me read that again that they may all be one just as you father are in me and i in you that they also may be in us we are one with god and each other through jesus jesus was praying this prayer asking the father to do this knowing that that the father will do it through his sacrifice as the perfect lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world jesus is asking <clears throat> for the benefits of the cross he's asking that the the father would do this as he lays down his life that the father would use his humility his sacrifice his surrender his trust his nature his life that he would so use it to make us one with god and with each other Do we realize the depth of what Jesus is saying here? We've read it many times. It's like it's like the famous passage in 2 Chronicles 7:14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven, forgive their sins and heal their lands. It's the most quoted passage and least applied in the body of Christ. We quote it we lift it up, we talk about it, but we do not apply it at the depths or levels the Lord is speaking of. And we've read this passage in John 17 so many times, but have we really understood? Have we really digested it? I think we could all go further. I think we'd agree to that. We could all go further. So question to a question for all of our hearts. Do we even think it is possible to be one with God and each other. Ooh, what a word. What a word. <laughs> and I want you to think about this first in your believing family. Not not your your sisters on this line, but your believing family. Mm -hmm. Those who are followers of Jesus, mm -hmm. who you've who you have uh, known your whole life is it possible for you to be one with them is is that is that god's heart is that his desire is that what he paid for you know if you go to a store yes. if you go to a store and you want to buy something and let's say that the, that it comes with five different things and so you take it to the counter and you put those five different things that makes the whole of the product that you're buying and and the and you pay full price but the cashier withholds two of those items so out of five you get three and you paid full price what are you gonna say you're gonna say wait a minute I'm paying full price for this product doesn't work unless I get all five parts to it mm -hmm. and the cashier says well you only get three and you would not be okay with that well, Jesus paid the full price for this. He paid the full ransom price for everything, all the benefits that he wants from what he paid for. And he paid for us to be one. One with him, which must come first. This is a part of the problem. We can't, we can't begin to cast the, the thought of, I can be one with others before I'm one with God. Because it's the oneness that you have with each other is the nature and disposition of God. It doesn't work 
unless you're one with God first or maturing in it. I think when the first, the first one with God is believed and embraced, the second won't be as hard. You'll still have trials and struggles, but the second won't be as hard as your one with God. I am recon reconciled to God. We are His beloved sons and daughters. Beloved. Cherished. Cherished. Sons and daughters. Personally, I've moved too quickly from this and not realized the depths of love that are stated here. I've moved too fast. And I, and I think it's time that we come back and we meditate on this. And the scripture goes on and says that they would be one in us so that the world may believe that you've sent me. Now, unity is not a means to an end. Unity is the nature of God. When we unite, people notice. But it's, we don't unite for people to notice. So a lot, of, a lot of churches will proclaim, well, we need to be united. Or a lot of pastors, they come together, they're united, almost with a, with a motive. <laughs> you know, like, well, if we unite and pray, then God will hear us, and then we'll get revival, and blah, 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 blah. And they do it over and over for years and years, and it doesn't happen. And not that it can happen, it just doesn't happen. But part of it, I believe, is because we're looking for an end. If I do A plus B, I'll get C. But the reality is, is God is saying, unity is my nature. Unity is my ecosystem. And out of unity, the byproducts of unity is the world will know that you're mine. It's definitely helpful. But that's, that is the byproduct. It's not the first. So un we, need to f we need to find the value of unity in the nature of God not in what we get from God out of it. Otherwise, it's a bad motive. So, so he says, and the world will know as a byproduct that, that, G, that the Father sent the Son. In verse 22, it says this, The glory that you have given me, I have given them. Now, what is the glory? The glory is the family nature of God. I've given them the family nature. I've given them the DNA. I've given them the love and goodness. All the good of God I've given to them. This is how we're one with God and with each other. Because you have the fruit of the Spirit in you. That means when someone does something wrong, you have kindness and gentleness and patience with them. <clears throat> this is the glory of God. This is the nature of family. You endure. Love never fails. Bears all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things. This is how we're one. Not because we all act perfectly towards each other. We're one because we're unoffendable. Think about that. We have to call, we're, we're called to, to live in a different culture. We're called to live at a higher level. We are not a part of this, of the worldly culture anymore. We're not a part of, of the American culture. We're not a part of the Mexican culture. We're not a part of the South Korean culture. Whatever culture you want to pick, we're not a part of that anymore. We are a part of the kingdom culture. And the kingdom culture is patient, kind, loving, is not easily offended, is that we walk in humility and deep care for each other. We, we, we all need to, to rise to another level where the Lord where the Lord's economy is, where the Lord's ways are. And, and, and that's what brings us into oneness. When we are one in the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit, 
we come into this oneness. So the glory that you've been given is a glory of the family nature. It's a glory of, it's the DNA of God. It's the goodness, it's the love of God. And it goes on and says that they may be one even as we are one. The means to being one with your family, your believing family specifically, and your sisters and brothers in the Lord, the means in which to accomplish that is His glory received and embraced. Think about this with your believing family. And the definition, now check out the definition. The definition of being one is as we are one. Jesus says this, Father, as we are one, may, may they be one, even as we are one. So, so let me read it again. The glory that, that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them, you and me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me and loved them, even as you loved me. So there's two onenesses here, okay? The first is that we are one with God, just as the Son is one with the Father, we mm -hmm. are one with God. And the second oneness is us being one with each other, recognizing that we're all one with God and that we're brothers and sisters in one family, in one body, we are one bride. Jesus did not die for a harem. He died for one bride. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, so division is really, when Jesus looks down at California, he sees one church. Mm -hmm. He doesn't see the 35,000 or more denominations that have been created over time. I mean, if we can find a reason to divide, we will. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Jesus, yeah. Jesus sees one church. He sees one body. Jesus has not been chopped into pieces. He has one, he has one body. But the way that we are one, is first we're one with Him. But, I mean, even what we're talking about is astonishing. I mean, let's continue for a minute here. I in them, Jesus in us, you in me, that they may become perfectly one so that the world may know that you sent me. Because you, Father, live in them just as... So, this is my thought here. Because, Jesus saying, because you, Father, live in them just as you live in me. This, because the Father lives in us, because the Son lives in us, it's observable. It's not a concept or a philosophy, but it's a, an observable reality. Is it observable in our life that we are one with God? Wow. See, see w w when we start to think this way, our hearts open more and God lifts us up higher. We, so, so knowledge helps us to cooperate. It doesn't make us smarter. It helps us to cooperate. Knowing opens us up to cooperate at higher levels. If I understand that God actually wants to possess me and fill me with his presence and he wants to live his life through me and that I can be one with him, then I will live a higher lifestyle as I, as I allow that to mature in my life. That I am one with God. So and then and then it will be observable. The glory of God will be on our life. We will shine brighter and brighter until noonday. It we will grow in the grace and glory and love of God and people. We need to meditate. I am one with God. I am one with Him. He purchased this for me. He did this. You see, I, I believe. 
at least in my personal experience, as I matured in this in this type of dynamic in my life, I became a better father. I became a better husband. It affected my family. It transformed them. The way I spoke. Yes. The way I loved mm -hmm. them. The way I I hugged them. The way I cared for them. The way I corrected them. It changed my disposition. It changed, you know, there are often times I'll, I'll, I'll well, there's, yes, I should say, there are times um, that I have to apologize to my children for my attitude or the way I said something. And, the, and, and there are many times when I apologize, I'll say, the words I used were not, were actually correct. Like, you did do this wrong, you need to do this this way, and you had a bad attitude, or whatever I say to them. But I said the way I said it, I was mad, I was angry, I, I, was, uh, I did not say it nicely, I had a bad spirit, that, I apologize for that. Because, because mm -hmm. it's, it's that, so it's that attitude and spirit that actually gets into the heart and tells a child, you're no good. What's wrong with you? You can't do anything mm -hmm. right. It's not the words uh, always, but it's that spirit. That spirit begins to communicate with them. And, and, and we, and when we go back and we, and we ask for forgiveness, because we were angry and we we didn't we didn't say it in an, in the right way, um, then then we when we ask for we we dismantle the work of the enemy in their hearts. That's why the scripture says to when you correct somebody, you do it in gentleness. Amen. Right? That Amen. that that you yourself Amen. won't get trapped in in whatever you're right. trying to correct somebody about. So you need to, we need to understand like we dismantle and we correct in gentleness now i don't i don't always do that. i wasn't raised this way i was i was raised in a harsh environment so it's it's taken me a long time and i'm still growing in and i still trip and fall and fall into traps and 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 correct my children incorrectly but but we need to recognize this is that that we have been given oneness with god so it's seven o'clock. So let's let's close on this in saying today, let's meditate. I am one with God. I am one with God. I am his son, his daughter. There is no barrier between him and I. No barrier. No barrier. Nothing. He took care of every barrier. The only barrier that may exist is the lack of your renewing your mind to this truth. Mm. There's no barrier between you and him. He literally lives inside of us. He literally lives inside of us. And the oneness that he's given us is observable. He is gentle. He is inside of us. He is gentle, loving, wise. He's a, he gently directs our lives. He is perfect in every way in how he deals with us. You are safe and secure in him. And we need to understand that, that nothing can separate us from this oneness. Nothing. Mm -hmm. We need to renew our minds to this. We're the only ones, in a sense, that can separate ourselves, that can, that can reduce the benefits if we don't renew our minds. But let's meditate today. I'm one with God. He loves me. I'm safe. He lives inside of me. Hello, God. Hello, God, inside of me. Hello, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, what, what do you want to do today? What do you want to say today? How do you want to move through me today? Holy Spirit, can you give me a divine opportunity to make you observable to those around me, to my family, to my loved ones? Father, I just pray for each one of us that we would keep this in mind today, that you would be observable in our life. Not a concept, not a philosophy. Lord, this is truth. This is reality. 
you we are one with God through the power of the blood of Jesus by someone else someone else did this for us Jesus did it for us Jesus wants to live his life through us so father be observable in us today give us a divine appointment Help us to love someone. Give us opportunity to be patient with someone, to reveal your nature, your love, your care, your kindness, your mindset, your humility. Lord, come out, Lord, and be God inside of us. The world needs Jesus, and you're inside of us. So Jesus, come forth and show yourself to those around us. Be God. Be God inside of us, Lord, and do your bidding. Thank you that we are one with you. Allow us to enjoy it, to embrace it, to live it, to love it, to focus on it, and to walk with you. Abiding, abiding, abiding. We're a branch, you're our vine. We live because you, of you, Lord. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Chris, I would like to just thank you for um, these teachings. And to everyone, I'm Jackie, and um, I'm new to the line. I've just been on since this has started, and I just wanted to share how blessed I've been with this teaching. This is exactly what I need uh, for right now. I just recently, well, a year ago, I relocated from California to Alabama, and I came here um, because my son asked me to come. And, um, you know, so I had all of this thoughts in my head, what it would be like, you know, to be with him and his family, be closer. He had left home like 30 years ago and so, and was in the military and all of that. And so I hadn't really spent a lot of time in those years other than maybe every two years when I go visit for a month or he came and visited or we had a family thing. And so, uh, you know, so everything was great and I was just so excited. And then I got here. And uh, but before I got here, I recognized that I didn't just come for him. God had told me, uh, you know, you've been ministering everywhere. It's time for you to minister to your family because I had seen a lot of things that just wasn't right. And so I knew that that part was that my coming was to minister to them, but also God had a work for me also uh, to do. But of course, when I got here, and, you know, the friction and all these things came. I forgot what God told me. So I started getting angry about a lot of different things and not only angry, but I took a lot of things personal. And, um, you know, so it was a woe is me kind of thing for a whole year. I'm hurt, offended. And, you know, why they're not doing this? And, you know, I'm the mama. Don't look, it doesn't look like anybody's recognizing me as the grandmother or this and that. You know, I was just in a big pity party. And uh, the Lord had revealed all of some of these things to me. And uh, so I came, I've been coming out of it slowly, you know, starting at the end of last year. And then to come into this, has really revealed that I can't do a work with the family until I get my heart right. And so mm-hmm. each one of these lessons or sessions that we have had has brought me to a newfound relationship with God, most of all, but it's allowing me to dump out all of the deep stuff that I have pressed down within myself. And I don't remember, Nan, I don't know if you remember, Sister Nancy, that one time you ministered to me and you talked to me about getting those hair roots out of my heart. And, and it, it, this lesson has brought me back to it, that we have to look deep down within ourselves. We may have confessed a lot of different things, but there's those hair roots that still down in there that you have to go in Amen. and allow the boy to pluck those things out. And so that's what's happening to me now. And I am so grateful. I am mm-hmm. so grateful. And this lesson today, um, you know, because I do sometimes speak in harshness and I don't even know that I'm doing it. And so I know that it's out of the heart, the bowels of the heart. It's, it's not the person that you may be speaking mm-hmm. to in anger or harshness. It's the stuff that's still in you. And mm-hmm. so what comes, what's in you comes out of you. And it comes yeah. out when it wants to, you know. And in harshness. And so I'm just so 
I'm just beautiful. I'm just so grateful for the love of God that he loves me enough that he would pull me out of the darkness and bring Amen. me into his marvelous light over and over and over again. I just want to just holler. I just want to cry. I just want to shout because Amen. he didn't leave me where I was thinking I was Amen, okay. Jackie. Glory so bless God. him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless everyone Jesus. on the line. Your Lord prayers Lord. have been Hallelujah. such Hallelujah. a blessing to me. Hallelujah. Thank I just you. thank you for this word that is powerful. Oh, that is so Hallelujah. Sharper than a two edged sword. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glorify your name, Lord. Glorify your name. Hallelujah. It's so awesome. 